In this session, we are going to discuss about the syllabus for Gate Computer Science and the weightage of each and every subject in Gate Computer Science and how can you follow the video lectures, how can you start your preparation. So, in your previous video, we had this introduction uh, part, we have covered the introduction part in the previous video, that is, what is Gate Examination. Now, in this video, we are having the complete discussion regarding the syllabus and the weightage of each and every subject. So, as you can see, uh, in the syllabus, we have two basic portions, two important portions in the Gate Computer Science syllabus. The first portion is your general aptitude and reasoning and second one is your computer science topics. So, this general aptitude and reasoning, this is approximately of 15 marks or you can say 15, it contains 15% of the entire Gate Computer Science paper and the rest of your technical section is of 85 marks. So, in this aptitude uh, part, we have two portions, one is verbal aptitude and second one is numerical aptitude. So, verbal aptitude contains grammar, vocabulary, coding, decoding, series, directions, blood relations, arrangements, syllogism, inference and assumptions, clock and puzzles. And the same way, for numerical ability, we have fundamentals, equations, percentages, averages, ratio, proportional, mixtures, allegations, data interpretation, data sufficiency, time, speed and distance, time and work, set theory and Venn diagrams, progressions, functions and graphs, logarithms, permutations and combinations, probability, geometry and mensuration. So this is general aptitude. So generally the question paper, the questions that you get in general aptitude is very easy. So even without any kind of preparation, if you directly go in the examination, still out of 15, you are able to score 10 plus marks. 10 se zyada marks score karna general aptitude mein kaafi easy hai because this portion is very easy in the gate examination. Then you have uh, engineering and discrete mathematics. So in other branches like you have mechanical, civil, electronics and communication in those branches the mathematical portion is quite huge because they ask engineering mathematics lot of topics are there in, in engineering mathematics in those uh, branches. But here in computer science, we do not really have a lot of topics in engineering mathematics. Only three topics are there, which are linear algebra, calculus and probability. And rest of the topic here, we are from, we are having from discrete mathematics. So this discrete mathematics is only in the computer science discipline. This is not in other branches. And again, this discrete mathematics is core related to your computer science problems. So a lot of problems which we study in discrete mathematics, a lot of things that we are going to study in discrete mathematics. For example, graph theory, it will be very, very useful in other subjects. In uh, algorithms, you are going to study the applications of graph theory in algorithms. When we have permutations and combinations here, and these permutations and combinations are going to be very useful in each and every subject. Because there are some previous gate questions which are based on permutations and combination and that particular subject. So obviously this is the kind of portion that you will never leave because this is the most important portion. Again, this entire portion is approximately of 15 marks. This 15 marks ka portion. It is a very huge weightage. So you can clearly see out of 100 marks, you have 15 marks of aptitude, 15 marks of mathematics. So total this is 30 marks and rest 70 marks is your core technical area. So in that 70 marks, we have digital logic, we have computer organization and architecture, you have programming and data structures, algorithms, theory of computation. In the same way, we have compiler design, operating system, database management system and computer networks. So what you can do is, I, you can pause this video to check out the complete syllabus or you can download the PDF of this presentation from this video. So uh, we have embedded the PDF of this presentation in the comment section of this video. Now, this is the marks distribution from last three years. So we have analyzed the question paper from 2017, 2018 as well as 2019. So this is 2017 set two. This is 2017 set one. This is 2018 and this is 2019. So here you can clearly see that some of these subjects are extremely important. For example, here you have subject like aptitude and reasoning, which is extremely important. And both discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics, they are also very, very important. So together discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics, it comes for approximately 15 to 18 marks. So here it is of 14 marks in 2018. It was of 18 marks in 2017. It was of approximately 14 marks. So this is also one of the portion that you should never leave. 
A part of this, some of these subjects are very important. For example, this operating system, they are asking a lot of questions from operating system. And theory of computation is very important. And this computer networks is very important. So some of these subjects are very, very important. Or in other words, you can say extremely important. So to secure a good rank in gate exam, when I'm saying good rank, it means to get into top 1000 ranks. To secure a good rank in gate exam, you have to follow each of these subjects thoroughly. You have to study each of these subjects thoroughly. You cannot leave any subject in between. You have to leave any subject in between. You have to leave any Why? Because if you will leave one or two subjects, then there will be somebody else who is sitting in some other part of the country and he will be studying that subject. Remember, it is not an examination which is on your college level. This is an examination which is on the nation's level. So you are not only going to compete with your classroom students. You are not only going to compete the students which are in your college. You are going to compete with everyone on the national level. Approximately 1 lakh plus candidates will be applying for the gate exam. So you will be competing for with all of those 1 lakh plus candidates. Next is subject wise analysis and this is the average analysis of uh, last three years. So from the last three years I can see that from aptitude and reasoning they have asked approximately 15 marks from uh, engineering mathematics plus discrete mathematics. Both of them together are approximately 15 marks, 1-5. Then you have uh, some most important subjects here is operate, uh, theory of computation. From theory of computation they have asked approximately 9 to 10 marks. Theory of Computation, Computer Networks. So again, this Computer Networks is also uh, one of the lengthiest subject here. So this is no such topic that you have to leave. You cannot leave any topic here because uh, all of these topics are dependent on each other. They are having some connection between each other. Now here there is something special that you will notice here. There are some special things that you can see here, that you can notice here. You can notice that I have written these subjects in a group. For example, here we have C programming data structures in algorithm. I've written them in a group. We have digital logic, computer architecture organization and operating system. We have theory of computation and compiler design. Then you have discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics. And then this is DBMS, this is computer networks and this is reasoning. So why I have written them in a group? The thing is these subjects are very much interrelated to each other. You cannot study data structure without studying C programming. You cannot study algorithms without studying data structure. So whenever you have to prepare, whenever you are going to prepare these subjects, you have to prepare these subjects together. So operating system and computer architecture, they are very much close to each other, very much interlinked to each other. In the same way, this compiler design requires the basic of theory of computation. So you cannot study compiler design without studying theory of computation so you, when you are preparing for exam you have to make sure make sure that you in in you know in each of these groups you are not weak in one subject what do i mean to say by this is that if you are weak in data structures obviously your algorithm subject will suffer if you're weak in c programming obviously your data structures and algorithm both of them will suffer if you are weak in theory of computation then compiler design will suffer if you are weak in computer architecture then operating system will suffer and the questions that they are giving in the examination, they are cross-disciplinary. That means some of these questions will be utilizing the concept of computer architecture as well as operating system. So the questions will be like, this is a complete combination of both of these topics. And again, so you cannot leave, study one subject here and leave another. So you have to study them together. Okay. So what are the books that you can refer? For discrete mathematics, only one book is good, which is Rosen, Kenneth H. Rosen. So you should refer this book only. See, first, first thing is, the syllabus for gate examination is very lengthy. So you cannot follow through the book entirely. Because uh, if you are going to follow through the book, if you are going to pre prepare from the book, it will take you approximately one whole year just to finish the syllabus. The syllabus is very lengthy. Books can then you will spend a lot of time aapko lagega and that you cannot afford to spend. So it is always better that you should take some guidance, some coaching somewhere or use some notes to understand what are the topics you have to study. So here for discrete mathematics, Kenneth H. Rosen is the best book. But for graph theory, you can also refer Deo. Then for engineering mathematics, the book that you can refer is B.S. Karewal. Secondly, there's one more thing I want to suggest to you guys. 
whenever if you want to follow any textbook or reference book for the exam preparation do not uh, refer any local author books try to refer standard author books because if you refer standard author books then it it, uh, it will be better because in local author books sometimes they are presenting the concepts wrongly or sometimes they are having a lot of mistakes in the book so it is always better to prepare for any competitive exam always try to follow the standard authors only so here you can see for digital logic the best book is Morris Mano but again there is one more book I can recommend you that is A. Anand Kumar a lot of topics are given in A. Anand Kumar now if you want to take a book for programming data structures and algorithm together then you can take the book Narsimha Karumanchi and Narsimha Karumanchi did uh, MTech from IIT Bombay qualified the gate exam and he written the book for data structures and algorithm for gate it is also available on Amazon this is one of the best book for data structures and algorithm but if you want to refer any standard author book then for programming you can refer Dennis Ritchie for data structures you can refer Tenenbaum and for algorithms you can refer Corman for theory of computation you should refer Peter Lins Peter Lins is a standard author book but again if you want to refer any local author book then you can refer Puntam Baker or you can also refer Hopcroft as a standard author so for computer networks you can refer the book which is uh, Frozen. Frozen is the best book for computer networks but you can also use Cross and Ross then for computer architecture Carl Hemacher, Hemacher is the best book right? but again you have other options also like you have uh, options for Maurice Menno, you have options for Peterson, you have options for Ram Chandran so but I think Carl Hemacher will be the better book and best book for computer organization and architecture for operating system you should refer Galvin, Galvin is the only book which is good enough but again, if for a few topics you want to refer other books, you can refer Tenenbaum and William Stallings. And for database management system, I believe Navathe is the better book. But the problem is, I personally feel that the language given is Navathe is not easy to understand. So you can also refer Korth. Korth is a very easier book. But again, if you can refer Navathe, that will be the best. For compiler design, you can refer Ulmen. This is the only book that we can refer you. This is the only thing that you can do. Okay. <clears throat> now, how to study the subject? In which order should I study? So everybody gets these questions. Now, order means because see, subjects are dependent on each other. For example, you cannot study compiler design before studying theory of computation. You cannot study operating system or you cannot study computer architecture without studying the concepts of digital logic. You cannot study algorithms without studying the concepts of data structure. So again, it depends which order should you follow to prepare for the exam. I would recommend you that initially start with discrete mathematics. So any of these three orders you can follow, any of them is uh, good. So if you are not good with discrete mathematics, then you should start with discrete mathematics. But if you are good with discrete mathematics, then you can follow this schedule also. Because discrete mathematics may the concepts of combinatrix permutations and combinations and probability those concepts will be used in each of these subjects in every subject here the concepts of permutation combinations series and the probability they will be used extensively so if you are weak in that portion obviously you are going to suffer in other topics so here uh, you can start with discrete mathematics then you can do digital logic c programming data structures algorithms theory of computation compiler design operating system then you can do computer architecture database management system, computer networks, engineering mathematics and aptitude and reasoning. So here you can clearly see, I've given this aptitude and reasoning the last one because within one week you can easily prepare for aptitude and reasoning for gate exam. Now, now if you feel that you do not want to start with discrete mathematics, you can also start with theory of computation. In that case, do discrete mathematics as a second subject. Why is it? Because in digital logic also, the concepts of permutations and combinations they are going to be extensively used. So here you can do C programming, data structures, algorithms, compiler design, operating system, computer architecture, database management system, computer networks, engineering mathematics, aptitude and reasoning. So in this order, you can follow the subject. So the order that we are going to follow here in this course is this one. So we will be starting with digital logic, then C programming, data structures, algorithm. Then I will be taking discrete mathematics in middle and then we are going to follow in this order. 
so obviously the order is very important and why i've taken this order here because this order is the actual order in which you study these subjects in your btech to btech mein jis tarike se aap subject ko follow karte hain in your semesters for example you follow uh, in your first semester you study digital logic in your second semester you study c programming data structures in your third semester you study algorithms so the way you follow these subjects in semesters in btech the, the same way we are going to follow these subjects in the course and why we do that in this manner because each of these subjects are dependent on each other they are having very high dependencies so we have to respect the dependencies and we have to study these subjects according to that dependency only i hope this video was helpful for you and uh, we have covered lot of important things in this video and we are ready to start our course this video must have given you a clear picture of the syllabus of gate computer science in our next video we are going to discuss about how can you ask your doubt in what order you should in what Uh, things you can follow before asking any doubt because what happens is most of the time uh, students ask the doubt which are repeated so instead of any asking any doubt which is already repeated by somebody else and already so given a solution for somebody else then how should you follow that how should you find the solution how should you answer that doubt so let us meet in the next video let us meet in the next session and let us start